Welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we have LeBron and Mello take the NBA hostage, World Cup Finals, and MLB All-Star Game. Stay tuned. And that was once in a lifetime. That was one of the greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. I think, though, Beverly Hills Cop, RoboCop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. You're a little bit, a little bit slow on the Chewbacca Chainsaw draw there, huh? Uh, yeah, I put something in front of the Chewbacca this time, and um, he couldn't quite get here so quickly because there was, you know, a brick wall. I mean, brick walls don't slow him down for long, though. They, well, they are a minor obstacle when it comes to obstacles Chewbacca has faced. Yeah, I'd say the Galactic Empire is probably his number one um, uh, obstacle, but brick walls would be like a third or fourth. Like that. That's true. Now he does, and the Death Star wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> but but tonight is Thursday, so it's a sports show. It's what we do. It's how we roll. You know, I, 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 I've been thinking. It's pretty interesting how we do, like, polar opposite subjects. I, I mean, sports, entertainment, yeah. movies, is it's a lot different than sports. It is, but sports is still a form of entertainment, so it's still Very got true. that. And, and really, if you ask me, it is my favorite type of drama out there. Because there's the scripted drama, which is good, but usually you can see what's coming. You can never tell what's going to happen in sports. I have a good idea of what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure it's going to go this way most times. But you're never, you're never quite sure, and that's, that's why sports is so great. Honestly, that might just be because you're bad at predicting sports. No, I'm great. Think that? I'm great. I think I'm like almost perfect for the World Cup picks, except for almost. Uh, we'll get into that a little later. Almost <laughs> perfect, but like if I was betting and I put the same amount of money onto every game, I think I would win a lot more than I would lose this year with the World Cup. Now with other things, not so much. We, uh, yeah, you yeah, your uh, your March Madness didn't go so well. Now did it? Not so hot. But that's all right. That's before we officially launch the site, so you can't hold it against me. I could hold anything I want against you. <laughs> You're not allowed. And I did pick UConn to win it all. Well, all right. Okay, I didn't. That was a lie. Nobody picked UConn to win it all. That, you know, the, nobody expected them. Nobody expected UConn to win it all. I can never quite get where my finger is sometimes. Yeah, it's weird. But, you know, I'm just stalling for some reason. But, so tonight is a sports show, and so we're going to start it off the same way we start off every sports show, and that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. And this week's award goes to lovely Miss Ronda Rousey. And now, if you don't know who she is, she is a UFC women's fighter. She is currently the title holder for the bantamweight for the UFC, and she is 9-0. And now, she just last Saturday defended her title against a Miss yeah, I don't have her name on there. So, um, yeah, I get... It doesn't matter. She lost, she so win. sucks for you. <laughs> you don't get even get your name mentioned here. But uh, she wins with this spectacular throw. I mean, literally, starts off the fight. They start punching a little bit at each other. Ronda Rousey grabs her, throws her down to the ground, on top of her, pummels her, 16 seconds into the fight. 16 seconds, and it's done. So Miss Ronda Rousey, that is why she gets the Chewbacca Chainsaw Week of the Award, award Did, of the Week. Is that the one too where she she screwed up the other um, the other fighter so much that the other fighter got up for a little bit and tried to fight the ref for a bit? <laughs> is that, going on? that is how much of a knock. That is like a Chewbacca esque knockout. I can imagine if Chewbacca was in the UFC ring fighting people, he would they would they would be doing that all the time. Even though I think his record for a fight is like point two three four tenths of a second because i mean he's chewbacca once he looked at a guy and he just fainted and they called that a knockout so but yeah i mean i mean i don't know if you usually, know usually 
usually, no, honestly, that guy that got the look and got knocked out was a smart person. <laughs> <laughs> he would get the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award for being so intelligent in the ring. Because that's the best way to avoid a fight with Chewbacca, because you're not going to win. And if you actually fight with him, it's going to go really bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to have it all. And now the UFC women's division isn't that big. I mean, it's nowhere near what the men's division is. But still, Ronda Rousey has – she's 9-0 and right now in her career. She has been just running through all these point, uh, opponents just like they're nothing. And not to mention, she has one of the best smiles you'll ever see on a, on a anybody. I mean, she's got a million-dollar smile, and then she's got like a million-dollar right hook. So I think that combination – is a pretty good one. And now a lot of people have been hearing, and I don't really like this comparison, they've been comparing her to Royce Gracie because in the beginning of the UFC fighting, it was pretty much just like, okay, fight however you want. And these guys would go into the ring, and, and Royce Gracie was a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Now, most people back then in the early, the mid-90s, I'd say, had no clue what Brazilian jiu-jitsu was. Yeah, uh, now it's pretty standard. They soon found out. Now that's one of the belts that you have to have to even come close to doing anything in the UFC. I believe that's where the arm bars come from, where a lot of the leg locks come from, a lot of the throws. So it was almost unfair that Royce Gracie knew this super technique that nobody else knew, and he used it on him. Ronda Rousey's doing this against super trained, all of the belts that she has, uh, I mean, everybody knows what's coming. She just totally steamrolls them. So, you know, Ronda Rousey, she might be the greatest female fighter of all time. Now, Layla Ali might have a problem with me saying that, but I don't really care. And you know what? I would even put Ronda Rousey up against some of the men fighters in her same weight class. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can take on the fighters the way she does like uh, in the women's league, then I would say definitely, yeah, she could probably. Well, I know she could definitely kick my ass. But <laughs> um, yeah, that's that. I'm six foot three, about two hundred twenty pounds, so I'm not a small guy. And you're what six foot two, about the same. And yeah, she could probably take both of us at the same time with like out even breaking a sweat. Like, yeah, ugh, it wouldn't be pretty. No, I would never, <laughs> Rhonda. I will never ever want to fight you. I actually heard a story about. I her. think I'll just drop down. Like if she wants to fight me, I might have to just drop down, just like we got Chewbacca. Yeah. <laughs> the, do, do the Chewbacca defense. Yeah. <laughs> just, 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 uh, just no, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the smartest thing. And I actually, I actually read a story about her. Apparently, like five, six years ago, before she became more famous and popular. Now she's actually a Olympic bronze medalist for jujitsu. So I mean. No Go slouch figure. there. Yeah. Um, but there was a story that came out that said um, she was at a movie theater and apparently some guys behind her kept kicking her seats or something like that. So she stood up and asked them – or she, she asked them nicely to stop. They kept doing it. They got even worse when she asked them to stop. So she like threw something at them or something. And then after the movie was over, these two guys actually cornered her and were trying to you know just intimidate her. And she wound up breaking one of their arms and breaking another one's nose. So, yeah, Rhonda – I'm that never goes out to anyone you. else that wants to just pick on anyone. You never know. <laughs> it's true, and, and especially if you're going to pick on a woman who you would think is a lot weaker, and you're just doing it because you think this person's weaker. I think they got what they deserved. And it's just yeah. my opinion. I'm not a very very big advocate of violence. If you notice, we don't really talk about the UFC or boxing, but I just think what Ronda's doing is just it, it's pretty cool. So, Ronda, you get our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say she's the first female to get one, but Lucy Lee got one earlier, so sorry. Yep. Sorry, Rhonda. Lucy Lee beat you to it. What can you do? But let's move it on to the first subject of the night, and that is going to be the World Cup Finals, because the whole world is watching, and Brazil wishes they weren't. I don't know if anybody out there saw that game. What am I saying? Everybody saw that game, but we had a semifinals match between Brazil Germany and Brazil. Saw that game. Yeah, they, they wish they hadn't. They wish Ronda was around so they could just knock, like, <laughs> take that part of her memory out. Just, boom. oh, you won't remember it. Don't worry. But yeah, so Brazil got a humiliating loss uh, where they lost 7 1 to Germany. Now, I'm going to say this, and I'm just going to get it out of the way. Yes. And that one was only at the end. 
by the way. So it was, yeah. it was like 7-0 for a while, I think. Germany was, was afraid Germany was afraid that they wouldn't make it out of the stadium unless they let them score one. So they're like, okay, guys, score, score. Please score. We don't want to die getting on the bus. Um, but I now I'm going to get it out of the way saying that Neymar, their best player, he was out due to he cracked a vertebrae, which is, oh, that just sounds brutal. Um, and Silva was out, one of their better defenders, I believe, and because he had two yellow cards in the tournament that gives you an automatic one-game suspension. So arguably their two best players were out of this game. But that does not excuse a 7-1 drubbing. Now, the 7-1 margin, seven goals is the most goals, goals ever scored by a team in the semifinal round. Uh, the margin of victory of six goals is the largest margin of semifinal round. So, yeah, Brazil, what, what happened? I mean, in soccer, home field advantage is probably bigger than in any other sport that I can think of. Uh, because a lot of times, especially when you get to some of these European leagues, uh, you'll hear about the UEFA Cup, you know, um, the Champions League, where you have aggregate scoring, where you know, okay, so we both won a game, 1-1, but I scored two goals in your place, where you only scored one goal in mine, so I end up winning. Goal differential and stuff, and it really comes down to, I don't know how to complete that thought, so I'm just going to switch the thought. Is that a weird thing to do? That's what we'll call a cop out, but hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a, uh, you know, we're in no rush. Uh, we're just chilling with our words from our yeah. face fans. Uh-huh. Yeah, they they want me to finish the th- sentence, but <laughs> so, but yeah. So I mean, it is it is a huge advantage having home field advantage, home pitch advantage. If I'm going to use their terminology, um, and you just blew it what's going on brazil like maybe maybe all the beautiful women in brazil distracted the team they they're there they're there all the time that's true i don't think that's a big deal for them no excuse it's not as big you know (laughs) no excuse the germans should have been more distracted you know like (laughs) they don't see these usually touche but they weren't and um they totally totally murdered brazil it just is very shocking and then in the, the other matchup, you had Netherlands, who I kind of was my favorite team so far. And- oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. While we're getting into this, I need to take a break. Okay. We're going to roll back the tape in our minds. Roll back, last week. everybody. All right. <laughs> you know, we'd put a lake up if we were professional or something like that. But We're uh, not that professional. Uh, as I recall, yeah, you picked the Netherlands to win. Yeah, Netherlands to win. Someone else here picked Argentina. Someone here. I'm looking for that someone. I don't see Chewbacca in the room anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that definitely was me. Okay. Got you okay. on that one. That was the only one I dis- I even talked to you about, too. I told you. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> like no, uh, I'm just going to go different. So, uh, well, hey, so I'd want- like to, to enjoy this this win. It's now 1-0 on words from my face for anything. Uh <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you can't just randomly pick the one thing that you got. Oh, wow. So you're like, I'm going to retire as champion. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good night. And you can send the trophy to my house. Yeah, that's uh, that's the best way to do it. Retire on top. I mean, that's what complaint. you used to do all the I, time. I did. People don't know. Brian, that's the kind of guy he is. You play with him. As soon as he wins, he's he's done. He's like, out. literally, we'd play a video game, and I'd lose, 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 and then I'd win. and be like, okay, guys, I'm done. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. I retire champion. And it really frustrates people, but I enjoy doing it. So, But, but you lost yeah. this time. So I did lose this time. <laughs> and, and this was a game that kind of reminds me why Americans don't really watch soccer, because it was a 0-0 game going through 120 minutes, and that's not exciting to see. All you saw was Robin flopping all over the place. Messi didn't really ever get it quite together like we know he can, but it didn't matter. Until the shootout. Well, until the shootout, but, I mean, like, you're supposed to win more. I mean, win more. Score more of those shootouts. It's it's a lot harder not to score than it is to score almost with those shootouts because the net's so big, they're shooting from short enough distance that the goalie really just has to guess and hope he gets lucky. That's true, um, but the goalie is known as was known as, like, one of the best goalies. It's specifically four shootouts. No. Like, the Netherlands was not able to switch out the goalie that they, they used. Did. Speci- that was the, the game before uh, when they were playing mm-hmm. somebody else in the like Costa Rica. I thought Rica he played all the whole game this time. Uh, I don't think so. I think they were they did it the same way and they were going to switch out with the other guy but they had already used three substitutions and in soccer you're only allowed to have three substitutions per match. 
even if it goes into overtime, that's all you're allowed, which I think you should get an extra substitution for overtime. I mean, that's an extra 30 minutes, so. But they, they don't give it to him, so. He actually didn't get to play, so that was one of the things that some of the Netherlands fans were kind of upset about. But this game was 0-0. I mean, pretty just boring throughout most of the game. And then you had the cool shootout. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the shootout, but I could have done without the extra 30 minutes of soccer and just gone straight to the shootout, to be honest with you. Mm. But, yeah, yeah, so but it was still interesting. You, You did have the Netherlands goalie did really screw up. I mean, he had one shot where it hit his hands, then the ball went straight up, hit the top bar, and bounced into the goal, and that counted against him. And now I don't know a lot about soccer, but I do know that they teach you to punch the ball instead of use just your hands if you can't catch it. And that is so something like that does not happen. So yeah, yeah. But but I mean they 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 won by by two in the shootout. They didn't even do the last one, so it might not have even mattered had he. Um, had he successfully blocked that one, they were still yeah, winning. Yeah, because so. they would have had to block another one or hope for a miss from the other team. But, mm-hmm. yeah, what can you do? Now, that leads to a pretty, hopefully, entertaining matchup uh, with the Germany playing Argentina this coming Sunday, I believe the game is. Yes, yes, Sunday. Yes, yes it is Sunday. Yes, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Don't, no, don't you remember know. those monster truck commercials? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Everyone remembers those monster truck commercials because they were monster trucks. And you're like, yes, America's cars, America. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, but but we're yeah, talking so soccer. We yeah, uh, we we shoot it off track all the time. But so you have Germany playing Argentina. Now my pick in the beginning of the tournament was Germany to win it all. I just think they're the best all around team. Now I had shifted over to the Netherlands because I thought they could score better than anybody else. But Germany definitely proved me wrong by scoring seven goals so and and also i I forgot to mention that mirosov Klosa became the all-time leading scorer in world cup matches with an extra goal he has 16 all-time and that beat out ronaldo from brazil um you know by one i think right by one yeah so but he could he could add to it with the world cup final coming up so you never know but i I really look forward to this game because you're going to see a lot of Argentina offense, I can see them really attacking, 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 especially with Messi, Cavani, all those guys up front. Um, but you better watch out for that German counterattack. Yeah. Because once Ozul gets the ball on his foot, he is, uh, he's, for lack of a better term, he's a floor general or I guess field general. You usually hear that with football players, they, especially quarterbacks, but I think that really applies to him because he's the guy who really controls the German offense. He sets everybody up. He provides all the passing lanes. He's really the guy who, who sparks them. So yeah, but I you do look. You can't uh, put anything past past Messi. I mean, he is still. I would say still shows as the best player in the in the in the world. In, oh, yeah, I wouldn't right disagree now, so. at all. I mean, Messi does have the capabilities in him to say, you know what, I'm going to take over this game and I'm going to score three goals. And Messi, any night. He can do that, especially if you look at the way he plays in the Spanish Premier League. It's almost more of a shocker for him not to score three goals than it is for him uh, to score, you know, three goals. So uh, I could see it going either way, but I really, I just, I just see the German defense being good enough to hold him down a little bit more than some of the other teams have been able to do. Now Messi hasn't scored a ton of goals, but he's been in on every goal that they've scored. It feels like so it's going to be kind of a battle between Messi and the entire German team. Yeah, and. All these these three games, the semifinals and the finals, are showing something a rather interesting set of matchups too, because you're seeing the difference between a lot of the um, the European teams' play styles versus the the Central, South uh, American, Latin American play styles of the um, uh, the the emphasis on the the team and formation work versus the the single ball player handling. Um, so you see the European League, a lot more to do with, with passing the ball around, with, with staying in your formation and everything. The um, other, the South American, well, I think like Latin American League, all those um, Americans. Well, league, especially the, the Brazilian League, league. I, I totally yeah, agree with you your point. You more see more emphasis on ball handling, on yeah. individual ball handling and doing spectacular there. And we're going to... Just what you were saying too. We're gonna. We saw that both in the the Netherlands Argentina game, and in that instance, it was pretty evenly matched. But Argentina won out. Um, 
And we also saw that in the Germany Brazil game pretty extremely, and in that case, <laughs> just Germany on the Germany pretty, yeah. showed the yeah. their style. I mean, it's more than just their style. I mean, they played spectacularly, and Brazil played poorly and had other issues. But there was that matchup, and we're going to see that again now with the best, uh, the team with the best ball handler. So the best emphasis of that system mm-hmm. against the team that has the best uh the best forms the best formation the best totally agree. um team dynamic in that sense in that uh on that side of the, the thing so we'll see um those two styles just play off against each other and see which is which really is the quality one i guess and you're even and yeah i mean that's you're going to see the two styles of the continents but it's really you're going to see the two dominant continents in this uh sport you know europe and south america they're going to square off and i mean it's almost going to be like a world war of sorts. You're going to split it in a hemisphere. <laughs> Who's going to root for who? Um, so I, I just think it, it adds up to a pretty cool World Cup final. I, I do look to Germany to win again. I, I just think they're a better all-around team. But like you said, anything can happen when you have Messi on your team. It, it's mm-hmm. never a guaranteed squad. You know, the other team's never guaranteed to win because Messi can score four or five goals. All right, now maybe not four or five goals. Three goals out of the blue. So. I'm looking forward to that. So I'm picking uh, Germany. You're picking Argentina? See, uh, you know what? Uh, just to make it interesting, yeah, I'll go with Argentina. All right. Germany you know versus what? Argentina. All right. We'll see how this goes. Hey. We'll see how this goes. You know what's weird? I, I probably shouldn't. I probably should just say, you know what? I, I won my, my <laughs> I retire. I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, because this is going to be, this is definitely going to be a tough one. But uh, yeah. And, and I have been saying for a while, too, along with you, that. Germany definitely looks like they're they're probably going to go all the. I mean, they obviously went this far and they've been favored for a long time, but eh, we'll see. I mean, they they had a spectacular game last game, which makes it uh kind of scary. You know, maybe they're finally really turning on, but maybe that was just a fluke, and maybe it was just a matter of Brazil playing really poorly. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I'll, it could I'll, be I'll a combination game. of both. You know, you, you never know. Any given day. That's why I was saying sports are my favorite drama because you just never know what's going to happen, and it's just as heartbreaking as any movie that you could ever watch or any story you could ever read. And you know, yeah, and it's honestly, pretty cool that um, it gets played out in front of you. Like we were talking about all the the, the dangerous situation as as Germany beat Brazil, uh, I'm kind of surprised at how little destruction I've heard about happening. Like, we've heard about, like, buses getting set on fire and turned over and things like that, but I'm kind of surprised that it's it's been, it hasn't been, like, complete riots everywhere. Yeah, no, I am too, because, I mean, honestly, like, if you if you follow us on Twitter, at words from my face at Twitter. No, it's my face on Twitter, at not words at Twitter. from my face. At words not from my at face. Twitter. <laughs> at words my face on Twitter, um, then yeah, I, that that's <laughs> when I saw that the score was like five nothing. I think I think I said something like Germany's up five zero. Riots in Brazil, <laughs> you know, like question mark. So yeah, I mean, and just leading up to the tournament, there was plenty of of hullabaloo going on there. Hullabaloo. I like that word. I'm gonna use that more. Tell me if I should use that more in the comments down below. But <laughs> but so what do you what do you think? Who who's gonna win? Uh, what do you what are your team that you're rooting for? Is it gonna be Argentina because Messi has a crazy game, or is it gonna be Bra- uh, Germany just because they're it's not gonna be Brazil? Old. We'll tell you it's that not, much. It's not. It's not. <laughs> I can guarantee you Brazil will not win this year's World Cup. But let us know in comments down below. Of course, you can always hit us up at Words My Face on Twitter, wordsfromyface.com, and wordsfromyface at gmail.com. All good places. Uh, we have a Facebook page, too. I keep forgetting about that one. It's there. Like it. Yeah. And if you don't, all right. I'm not mad. But please like I, it. All right. He's mad. So <laughs> watch out. Give him your angry stare. Okay. <laughs> See, you don't want that to happen again. Don't want it to happen again. Chewbacca will be back. He's revving up that chainsaw, keeping it lubricated. So, <laughs> but let's move it on to the next topic, and that is going to be uh, LeBron and Melo. And when I say Melo, I mean Carmelo, Anthony, are taking the NBA hostage, it kind of seems, this year. Because these are two huge players. Now, don't get me wrong, they are the best players at their respective position. And that's it's funny because they both play the same position, small forward. And now you could see Carmelo shift down to a power forward sometimes if you're going small. And you could see LeBron James shift up to a shooting guard. But really their natural positions are small forward. And what we're seeing is just this, this just halt 
to all NBA free agency. Normally, by this time, we're, what, 10 days in? You'd see, Almost all the free agents would be off the market. But no, no. Most of the talented free agents are still out there, still waiting to hear and see what's going to happen with these two. Because what, what you have going on is a lot of these teams that don't necessarily have a ton of room but have enough to sign a max player like Carmelo, like LeBron – are waiting to see what they decide before they go after other free agents. You have free agents, especially Luol Deng and Trevor Ariza, both small forwards, both very talented, both coming off pretty good years, especially Trevor Ariza, waiting to see where these guys fall, because wherever they don't go is where these guys are probably going to end up. And, and it's really it's just confusing to me, because there's reports today that there's police surrounding LeBron James's house. And I said, what? What are they surrounding his house for? He's not even in Cleveland. Right now he's in Las Vegas. And it's because they said that he might make an announcement within the next day or two. And if it's not for Cleveland, they don't yeah. want them burning down his house. Wow. He, yeah. he still lives in Cleveland? I, I didn't mean, even realize where, that. He was born and raised in Akron, Ohio. So Cleveland is pretty close to there. So he considers himself a Cleveland kid. And there are rumors that he is actually going to end up back there. But then with on the mellow side, um, you have teams like the Rockets that really want him to come play there with Dwight Howard and James Harden. L.A. wants him. Hell, L.A. wants LeBron James as well. Uh, and, and everybody else, now everybody's kind of put the pitch in for him. Mellow Chicago Bulls want him. And what's happening is these guys just aren't making any decisions. Nothing at all. Now, I hated it when LeBron James did the decision where he had his one hour special to tell everybody that he was leaving leaving Cleveland but I'd almost beg for that back right now because at least we'd know that this is going to end sometime soon because nobody knows what's going to happen LeBron James is scheduled to fly out and why we know that he's scheduled to go to the World Cup final I don't know I don't really care that he's going to the World Cup final but everybody's like he's going to make a decision before then he's going to make a decision before then but what if he doesn't what if he doesn't make a decision before f- Saturday and he flies to Brazil. What are we going to do? Maybe he's contemplating his life and thinking about going into soccer, depending on the yeah. outcome of the game. I've always said that if LeBron James wanted to play soccer, like if he had grown up playing soccer, I'm sure he would be just as good as with his feet as he is with his hands. And think about that. Especially if he was a goalie. Who's ever going to score on LeBron James? He can like reach side to side. <laughs> you can't score on that guy. But that's beside the point. But uh, um, yeah, so Mello is literally just waiting for LeBron to say, okay, I'm going here, and he's going to say, okay, these other teams wanted you, and they also wanted me, so I'm going to go here. What's going to happen? And then, so, we'll just start with the main suitors for LeBron James. Now, everybody's kind of thrown their hat in the ring, but it seems like it's boiled down to two teams, and that is the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Miami Heat. Now, he just, he saved the last team meeting. He's not taking any more team meetings, but he saved the last team meeting for Pat Riley and the Miami Heat. And apparently that meeting didn't go so well because it wasn't really Pat Riley saying, come back, we, we have a good team in place, we're going to win another championship. It was more Pat Riley saying, oh, you don't want to go there. Remember what that owner said about you? And if you don't remember what that is, Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, when, when LeBron James left, wrote the nastiest letter he possibly could saying that, hey, uh, you know, uh, we're going to win a championship before you. We don't want you anyway. You're a horrible person. We hate you pretty much. Uh, Paraphrasing. But the gist of it was that he did not like LeBron James. But apparently in the past couple years... Still, you're getting kind of desperate if if your tactic is not, hey, we have a great team. You should come to us because it's positive for you. And so it's like, you don't want to go there. They're crappy people over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that is like, very true. Like, I mean, do you have anything going for you? If you <laughs> if you look at the Miami Heat roster, I believe it consists of three players. Norris Cole, Josh McRoberts, who, by the way, like elbowed LeBron James in the playoffs this year. And Danny Granger, who never seems to be healthy for more than 20 games a season. So that's your three players on the Miami Heat roster right now. It's not looking so good. So I, I keep hearing that he's going to go back to Cleveland because he really wants to win a championship with Cleveland, with his hometown. He is very proud about being from that area. So, you know, I don't blame him. You know, go back home. I won't hate on you. And he does have a good foundation there. He's got Kyrie Irving, really talented point guard. They just drafted number one with Andrew Wiggins. And so you bring him, throw him in the mix, and you got a pretty solid squad there. Uh, now, 
another thing that I've heard, which is another funny thing, that he's holding up trades going on. Because if he heads to Cleveland, Minnesota, Cleveland is thinking about trading some of their first-round picks and some younger talent to Minnesota to get Kevin Love, the awesome power forward out of uh, – he was from UCLA. But um, little-known fact about Kevin Love, though, maybe it's not little-known, but he is uh, nephew to Beach Boys, Mike Love. Ooh. I like yeah, the Beach okay. Boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Beach Boys. Yeah, they, they were a big group for, for quite some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So and, and so that's that's one side that he's holding up. It's just it's just funny how one player can really hold up so many things. Yeah, and to think we were talking just a few weeks ago about how no, he's not gonna try and, and go elsewhere. He's probably gonna try to come back with uh, an even lighter contract so they could get the big four in Miami and all mm-hmm. that talk. And nah, he just decided, no, nope, no, nope. nope. that went out the window. That went out the window real quick. So. Yeah, and definitely, like, they're not going to, they're, they're simply not going to be the big four if he wants to have a max contract wherever they, wherever he goes. So, and I honestly, I'm not hating on him for saying, hey, I want the money I deserve. Uh, Cause he is the best player in the NBA. So if anybody deserves a max contract, it is LeBron James. But you, you never know where that domino is going to fall. I, my opinion, he's going to end up in Cleveland. Now, he knows it's going to be a couple years while that talent still develops around him before they're really championship ready. But I think he's okay with that. He says uh, he's got his two rings. He's been to four championship games, been to five championship games. I think he's a little more patient side of his career right now. And it's not like it's the downside of his career. The kid's a kid. I call him kid. He's only 29 years old, I believe, maybe 30. So he's still got plenty of good basketball left in him. Yeah, and one then thing that, I was wondering, though, at his level, is most of his income coming from the from his actual salary, though, or from endorsement deals, signing deals, other things that he has It's definitely going on endorsement deals. Like, he just scored a $30 be, million dollar payday off of the Beats by Dre sale to Apple, I believe it was, because he was yeah. a large investor in there. He and made $30 be, million dollars off of that, and that's the most any athlete in the NBA has ever made off of like a side deal. So, yeah. And that would be the reason why a player like him and other players have in the past take the smaller contracts so that you can free up the money for the rest of the team like they had, like he had been doing so that you can hopefully sh- be on a team that's doing better so you can shine a little bit better, get more attention so you can still make more deals because LeBron James... Yeah. Even if he's the best, like the best player in the league, if he's on a team that can't do anything at all with him, he's going to have a tough time getting enough wins to be reasonable to to keep watching. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's you know why probably why he has been taking the the less than a max contract for a while. Um, I mean that was the, the big deal with the Heat. You know, so you get the big three, you get the the big three together. You can win a whole bunch of games, and it did work. Like they didn't necessarily, they didn't bring home the the championship. They made it to the every championship, year, but they but made they it made to it, it exactly. to it every year. They, <laughs> they made it to it every year he was there. So and they right. won it some of the time. So right. half the time, that's not bad. Four, yeah. two, two out of four ain't bad. It ain't shabby at all. So you know, I, I expect LeBron to end up in Cleveland. That's just where I see him ending up. So whatever. But then you have the mellow side of things. And now this guy, I think he's kind of waiting for LeBron to go someplace and kind of see what type of money LeBron makes. But you have a team like Houston. They, they've really been courting him. Uh, L.A. has too. Again, L.A. kind of throws their name into the mix all the time. Chicago, there was reports that Chicago already sized him for a jersey <laughs> when he was meeting with them. And then you have the Knicks, where he's already there. I kind of see Carmelo staying with New York too. Because he can make so much money, more money in New York than he can anywhere else. Now, the reason he ended up in New York in the first place way back, not way back, four years ago, um, was because his wife, Lala, you might know her from MTV shows, she works in New York and so she wanted to be close, but apparently she's not doing the same job. And it, what was an interesting tactic, I thought, the Lakers, instead of pitching Carmelo Anthony, was pitching his wife, Lala, so eh, you never know. But I do see Melo ending up there. And then watch what happens. Right after those two guys sign, we're going to have like 15 signings within the next day. You're going to see all those small forwards I was talking about, Luol Deng, Trevor Reza, fly off the board. Uh, Chris Bosh is another big name that if Le- if LeBron does not return to Miami, he's not returning to Miami either. He's probably going to end up in Houston if Melo doesn't make it there. So 
No, that would really yeah, uh, kill Miami the situation too, because like people have been talking about, they're kind of a, a bought team, you know, and it's really the big three that they that they bought, and that they've sacrificed a lot of the rest of their roster mm -hmm. to get that big three. Now, if two of that big three are suddenly gone; they're <laughs> in some trouble. Yeah, and and literally, literally, I'm not even joking when I say this. They have three players signed for next year so far: Norris Cole, Josh McRoberts, and Danny Granger. That's it. Dwayne Wade's going to stay there. That's not even a question. But he's not even locked up yet. So, yeah, they're going to need some help. Yeah. Uh, Miami Heat, I am offering my services to you. I am more of a power forward. I, I know I'm only six foot three, but I can use my body weight, throw some elbows. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing for you. Hit me up at Words for My Face on Twitter, Google Plus. Comments down below. I will fly down. And, and Brendan is, is also, he's going to be my point guard. So you have a two, duo there. So that's five players, and you can actually have a team now. <laughs> so Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting if they end up <laughs> calling us up. <laughs> we, really like, hey, got, we got Chewbacca at our back, even though he, he kind of already his own team who yeah, wins the, the real every championship year. every year. But, uh, you know, he, he can. we'll convince him to come over and train with us. There yeah, you so. go. There you go. We have a training rookie that will help out. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen with those. You know what? Well, the, what do you guys? I had a thought about the situation with LeBron James and what's really okay. going on. Why now he needs that max contract? Kevin Durant. So he knows pretty soon, maybe even just next year. I mean, Kevin Durant already won the MVP this year. It's true, he did. Maybe he's the best player. his LeBron James is shine starting to go down. He wants to. He knows he's not going to get as many endorsement deals once. Kevin Durant really starts picking up. He knows a lot of the attention is going to come off him, so he needs the attention right now from doing this big, oh, where am I going to go thing. And maybe he also needs to, he wants to now lock up the money while he still can before Kevin Durant starts starts really shining. I, and uh, You know what, I, 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 I couldn't agree more with that statement because Kevin Durant is the man. He is the greatest player in the NBA this year. Um, he deserves, if they could go over the max contract, that is what Kevin Durant would deserve. Um... And that's a good point because he needs to go get his money now before Kevin Durant says, "All the money will be mine." Yeah, because and you, LeBron you James it. even said this year that Kevin Durant should be the MVP. He's rec he recognizes the talent there and the threat there. He does. I think so. And you know what's funny about what you just said is I did not put Brendan up to this at all. <laughs> so he, he I, came I actually out really did just think of this while we were talking about the situation. And so. Kevin Durant is the man, so mm, can't go wrong with a little Kevin Durant. But he's coming to DC, so that doesn't matter. You heard it here first. Next year, Kevin Durant will be a wizard. Uh, well, that would make his uh, his assistance to the Redskins make even more sense, I guess. But oh, it's still whatever. But cool <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so what do you guys think? Where's Melo going to end up? Where's LeBron going to end up? Do you do you mind that they're holding up the rest of free agency? Do you like the drama that's going on, or do you hate it? Would you rather just get this done and over with? Let us know in comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. What's My Face at Google Plus. Did I say gmail.com? I did not. And Facebook. I'll no, you did. There too. Well, okay, I did. I say a lot of things twice. That's what I do. But let's move it on to the last story of the night, and that is the MLB All-Star Game, the Summer Classic. Uh, I don't really understand this game because it's supposed to mark the mid-season, but yet it always happens like th two, three weeks after the middle of the season. It also just seems early to me for, for an all-star game. Like, it makes more sense to me the way the NFL does it. The Pro Bowl is right. Even though no one really cares that much, it happens after you've seen everyone play a full year, and the only thing left to do is the championship. But you do realize and, that the NFL is the only sport that does that. Basketball, hockey, and I believe even soccer do it in the middle of the season. Well, the NFL is America's real sport, so maybe that they're doing true. something right. That you know, <laughs> maybe that they got a better true. idea here. Maybe I think everyone the reason, else take some hints. I think that the reason that the NFL does it at the end instead of in the middle is because it's such a more physical game than those other sports. So they wouldn't want to risk in the middle of the season somebody getting injured. Also, you know. they're the NFL is a very uh, strict. We play once a week system, and they can't mm -hmm. take off a week to to do this so to do a, and, an and they already have their bye which week, they so. have that yeah they have that one week right there um between the the super bowl and the um the championship games to already fill up so they're like yeah that, that makes sense 
But yeah. yeah, so let's run down the, the rosters, and we'll start with the American League. Uh, starting at first base will be the Detroit Tigers' Miguel Cabrera. 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 I can't say that. Uh, at second base, you have Robinson Cano, uh, the guy who was a great player for New York, now plays for Seattle. Third base, I'm sorry, shortstop goes to Derek Jeter. Now, Derek Jeter hasn't had the best year, but he is retiring after the end of this year. And so, I mean, as a Lifetime Achievement Award, he deserves to start in the MLB All-Star Game as shortstop because that guy... I'm, just I'm actually surprised that he's still around, <laughs> to be honest. This I thought he was already years, out. But, 19 yeah. years, I believe. He started his career in 1995 with the Yankees. So he's been around for quite a long time. I mean, that guy's... I think this is his 15th All-Star Game. I mean, that's amazing. So 15 out of 19 years, you're an All-Star. I that, think we see a solid Hall of Fame career right there. I think I see the Hall of Fame in his future. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Derek Jeter will be in the Hall of Fame. I know it's risky. I know. But I think he'll be there. <laughs> so, And then we go to third base. You have Josh Donaldson from Oakland. Then in the outfield, you have Adam Jones from Baltimore, Mike Trout from the Angels, and Jose Batista from Toronto. Uh, so you have some pretty darn good players there. And uh, the big winners for the uh, All-Star game, I believe Baltimore had three players for the American League, which is the most uh, out of any American League team. And I think they deserved it. They are in first in their division. I'm missing a player, aren't I? Catcher, so Matt Wieters. Um, but he's out due to injury, and so you'll have Salvador Perez from Kansas City uh, replace him there. So that's pretty cool. It's actually sometimes kind of weird to me. It's kind of weird to me um, how Baltimore is doing so well, and they've been doing better the last like couple of years. Um, but I, you know, I remember being big fan of the Orioles because uh, we we grew up, grew up around there, and that was the only team in this. Well, area we grew up in the D.C. area, and yeah, but there was no Nationals. So yeah, there was no Nationals until what six years ago. So yeah, so so Orioles are still I consider my team, but I remember going to their games when they were just doing poorly every year you know um and it's just kind of strange to me now it's like oh they're they're winning they're they're good they're doing well like hmm. it, it's not hmm. just been this good? year either really so it's been the past three years uh they've been yeah. pretty decent um and i forgot to mention uh nelson cruz another baltimore player uh will be the designated hitter uh for the american league um and and i believe in all-star games they do the designated hitter depending on which city hosts it, so that is why there will be a designated hitter this year. And i got to say, Nelson Cruz is maybe, and I'm going to put a big asterisk next to this because it's a big maybe, but he might be the best offseason pickup of all time. Now, I don't know if you know about this guy, but he was a stellar hitter for the Texas Rangers for a long time. He was hitting average something like 30 to 40 home runs a year. Great 300-plus hitter. He could steal some bases in his earlier days. Uh, 100 RBIs a year. And he was kind of just cast aside. He had some injury problems last year, and he was kind of cast aside by the Texas Rangers. Hell, he was kind of cast aside by the entire MLB. And the Orioles picked him up for a veteran minimum contract. That is the least you're allowed to play, pay a player who has played that many years in the MLB. So, and he has done amazing. I think he's leading the league in homers. He's leading the league in RBIs. He's pretty. He's above a 300 for a hitter. I mean, he's been spectacular. And so that might go down in history as the greatest free agent signing of all time. Whether it be for just this one year or longer than that, he has shown that he is still a force to be reckoned with. So, hey, tats yep. off to Baltimore. Yeah. No. Um, now, my pick for their pitcher, the starting pitcher, I think for the AL it should be Mashiro Tanaka. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that that's what will happen, but that guy has been stellar all year, and I think he really deserves it. We, we talked we earlier. We talked about him previously. Yeah, mm. and yeah. Uh, the Japanese invasion, and he's leading the charge. So that guy. Well, he's definitely helping that, that trend right now by showing just how good that Japanese league mm -hmm. is. Like, it's already been known that they are good, but when you have uh, him coming out of that league – and doing so spectacular so quickly in the MLB, you know, that just speaks well more and more for, for that league. And we've already seen other players come out of there, of course, but wouldn't be a surprise if we see a lot more in the next couple of years coming out there. Yeah, I, I totally agree because, yeah, he's kind of shown that, hey, this is a good league. These are high, highly competitive players out there. 
And you know what? They don't mind making the big bucks here in America. So, hey, come on over. If it improves the game, I'm cool with it, you know? that's I just want to see the best competition. That's why I love American sports is because we have the best competition in all of our sports in all the world except for soccer. Uh, football. There is no other country that really plays it, so of course we have the best competition. Basketball. There's a few the best others players now, in the world come here. Yeah, but the, but basketball. All the best players in the world come here to America. Hockey. Uh, there's lots of leagues everywhere, uh, especially there in Europe some and Canada. There are leagues for that. Yeah, Canada and Canada plays with us, but um, still, the NHL definitely. is the yeah. biggest league for that. So, uh, baseball. I mean, there are more competitive leagues out there than most people realize. It's the best here in America. So. That, that's why we love to see all the best players come. I will pay you big bucks for it. But let's run down the NL rosters. Starting off with first base, we have Paul Goldschmidt from Arizona. Second base, you have Chase Utley from the Philadelphia Phillies. Then third, uh, I skipped shortstop, tro- is Troy Tolowitzki uh, out of the Colorado Rockies. Uh, then you have third base is Armiris Ramirez from the NL leading Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, then the outfielders, you have Carlos Gomez. You have Andrew McCutcheon, probably one of my favorite Sports Center commercials of all time. You know how Sports Center likes to do those goofy commercials. Uh, McCutcheon, you know, he plays for the Pirates, uh, and there's a lot of Pirate mascots in the college ranks. Uh, not much, so much in the pros. I mean, you have the Buccaneers and the Pirates; those are the only two I can really think of. Um, but he has this commercial where they're the they're running a meeting at the ESPN headquarters, and a whole bunch of the Pirate mascots run run in, and Andrew McCutcheon comes in and goes. Yes, yes, because they're stealing all the stuff. And he goes, plunder the locks, because they have bagels and locks, you know. <laughs> so they grab all that and they run. You just got to see it. YouTube it. It's out there. It's it's hilarious. Um, sure it is. Yeah, it I'm is. sure it is. it is. It's funny, man. I like it. <laughs> and then we had our superstar sensation from last year and Yasiel Pui uh, rounding out the outfielders. Now, it's kind of... So who's of... on first? Paul Goldschmidt. Huh? Paul Goldsmith. Yeah, I get where you're going, but I have an answer. So, <laughs> so but yeah, Paul Goldschmidt is on first, um, and then I believe their pitcher should be Clayton Kershaw. That guy's been spectacular all year. He did sign the record contract earlier this year, and he kind of has lived up to it. So, Had you know who you didn't mention up. on these rosters? Bryce Harper. But yeah, I'm sure he, he has an opinion it. about where he should be. <laughs> well, you know he has an opinion. Uh, I should be on center field, and I should bat second in the lineup for the All-Stars, and you should never take me out of the game. And Yeah, sorry, Bryce. You have not played. He's missed 50 games out of the, like, 80 played so far, so more than 80. So, yeah, you, you don't get that one. Sorry. But, uh, yeah. And then I want to kind of just mention a couple of the snubs, I think, and I will go back to the Washington team. And Anthony Rendon, now this guy is a young player. He is actually, in my opinion, he's been the best Washington National all year. Now this is a first place team, nine games above 500. And when you're the best player on that team the whole year consistently, you should you should be in the All-Star game. And he might make it in with a fan vote. He might not because he's not the most popular, well-known name out there. But if you haven't voted for your, your fan choice to get the last player in, vote Anthony Rendon. Watch just one Nationals game, and this guy shines. Not only can he hit, but he is one of the best defensive... Eh, he plays third base, I think. Uh, third baseman. Eh, I shouldn't say I think. I know he plays third base. Uh, he's one of the best defensive third basemen out there. you figure out what position he plays, because if you're confused... I know what position he plays. it too well. I know what position he plays. Third base. Third base. But he also plays second from time to time, and I think he'd make it on the all-star roster as second because with some of the injuries that the Washington Nationals have had, they've had to shift him around, which makes him even better. It doesn't matter where you put him. Hold on. Does he play second base because he's supposed to or because he happens to run a little too far to the left and gets on second base? Mm, Nothing. (laughs) You might need to womp yourself for that one. Wasn't even a... Womp it. <laughs> Womp yourself. You booed me earlier. I'm whomping you now. So, yeah, so you need to vote him in. And then from the AL, I believe Coco Crisp should be in. Um, now, not only is he playing on the athletics, I believe they have the best record in the major leagues right now, but his name is Coco Crisp. Yeah, how has he not had a major, major serial deal? 
I yeah. don't understand how his face is not on every cereal box ever. Coco's Crisp is... Coco Crisp. It needs to be a new official cereal. You know, he should be the, the sponsor for the cereal. I mean, or they should sponsor him. He should be the mascot for the cereal. Because, yeah, his name is Coco Crisp. I mean, come on. What does a guy need to do to get a contract out there with a, a cereal company? I don't know. Coco okay. Crisps. Come on now. You can't beat that. But, yeah, so those are my two snubs. So go ahead, jump online, vote them in. They can still be voted in. They should have been already in, in my opinion, but you can still vote them in. Uh, I believe you go to MLB.com and do those voting. But let us, let us know what do you think about these rosters. Do you think, you know, except for those two snubs, they were pretty well rounded out, or there's some players that shouldn't have been on there? Hell, do you think Derek Jeter deserved to be on there just because he was good for his whole career? You know, let us know. Comments down below. Of course, words from my face on gmail at gmail.com i was gonna say at words my face and then i kind of screwed that up i've been doing that a lot tonight i promise you next week i will be able to speak english properly yes i promise that. and that's a promise that he certainly cannot keep i cannot i i, I just lied to you folks so, so tell us how much you hate me for lying to you about speaking properly comments down below at words my face on twitter words my face at gmail.com of course google plus we're there and facebook hey hey Hey, we're everywhere. But, you know what? I think that's going to do it for the night, and I think we hit our 50-minute 50, 50 mark, even though we're a 30-minute show. Hmm. Yeah. But, as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Wait, Peace. we're still doing that? I, I didn't think we stopped doing that. What? Why would we oh, do this, that? This is, this is your stall tactic. I see. <laughs> Because he didn't realize I was coming up at the end of the show, even though we go over the topics in the order they're going to go in. But uh, we didn't even, you know, you know it, it's not that I didn't prepare the song in the slots because I forgot or anything. It's uh, that uh, I figured something else was happening. You know what? special i'm dizzy i can't find the stop broadcast here it is